Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my short-lived trailer tower project. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott, call sign KE4WMF. And if you've been watching my channel for a little bit, then you know that I have had a pretty good sized tower on the roof for a little bit. I ran into some minor problems with internal component fatigue on my rack. And I really think that could have happened to just about any aftermarket rack. We'll see. So what I did was in order to get that load off of the roof, because the, the weight was not the problem, it was the height of the load. It, it put a lot of leverage on the rack components. And so I went ahead and moved everything to my trailer. Now the trailer works well for transporting the tower. It's great for that. It's great for the convenience. I could set it up. Let's say that, well, I just did the January VHF contest and it was cold. I saw temperatures as low as 11 degrees during portions of my rove. And to set up the tower and the antennas in those conditions would be unpleasant to say the very least. But the cool thing about having the trailer is I could build it at my leisure on nice days, dry days, and then just leave it in the driveway and wait for when it was time to actually do my rove. And so it was great for that. It took just five minutes to connect the trailer and then off I went. And so that was, uh, that was a good setup for that. It uh, pulls well. I'm very accustomed to pulling the trailer. It's uh, I, I love using the thing, don't get me wrong. I use it anytime I don't want something wet or dirty in the car. The trailer is fantastic. But for a Rove, when you're uh, pulling off in the small little pullouts to make a contact at a grid line, or maybe you're doing grid swapping as uh, Andrea K2EZ and I were, we would, she did more of the maneuvering than I did because she's just, she's a four wheeler. Where with me, I had to, well, she was more experienced at it, so she did more of the maneuvering because of her experience, but I did most of the sitting still because I had two extra wheels and another axle behind me. And so it's tough to get in the smaller places with a trailer, and because it's small and black, it's very difficult to maneuver, especially if I happen to back down, like there was this one incline that I went down, I backed down it and then the trailer went down and I couldn't see the lighting or anything. So. Uh, uh, it was tough. I mean, I could do it, but it's it's inconvenient. And realistically, in that environment, I prefer the smaller footprint. So I'm going to go back to a rooftop tower of some sort. I will share details with you in yet another video. But let me go ahead and share with you what I have. The trailer is still behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there's the there's the mast right there. So you can just see the mast behind me. I do still have it connected. I I have, well, it seems like I might have wasted a lot of money on this project, but I really didn't because I already had the trailer. I already had the crossbars. They were to take off from up here from the ones that I thought I might have messed up. And I already had the tower, everything. It was the only thing, the only new expense of building this was four sections of four feet long coaxial cable and a couple of RF connectors and that's it. Everything else was already on hand and so it wasn't an expensive experiment. So what else can I tell you about it before I go out there? Oh, I also bought a new an extended rotator control cable and I've kind of been needing one of those anyway because the 15 footer that I have is just barely long enough to reach from up from here in the front seat of the car out the window and, and up to the roof. So I, it's amazing how fast 15 feet disappears. So I was going to buy another cable anyhow. And right now that cable is hardwired into the car. So I can't even uncouple the trailer until I'm ready to just remove everything. And right now I am ready to remove everything. I thought I was going to cut it and then put a connector in there so I can make it quick connect and leave the cables all in place full time. But I'm not going to do that. So uh, enough rambling about that. Let me take you outside and show you the trailer. All right, I thought I'd be able to shoot this with the nice blue sky in the background, but the sun is out now, so uh, I don't know. I'm going to do a quick and dirty shot of all of this, and yes, the car is dirty, so it is literally quick and dirty. <laughs> so up on the roof, you can see I still have my loops. 
a six meter, two meter. I do have a 222 loop now, although not a 222 transverter just yet. And then the 432 in the back there, I've got a, a 222 vertical there on the back. So that was how I was using FM. And so if we come back to the trailer where the antennas are, this here is my little trailer. And this is a, a three and a half by five footer. Used to be available at Lowe's. They've been discontinued. I think now they're selling it as a four by five, I think. And you can see these are the same Yagi's that I have it up on the car before. This is the same uh, tower from the tower improvement. Same coax feed lines. Everything is pretty much the same. And uh, yeah, there it is all up there. And then one of the concerns I had with the trailer was uh, ride stability. So you can see that I have a box in here. And this box has 300 pounds of sand in it. And that's to help stabilize everything so it doesn't bounce. You can see I have spare tires for both the car and the trailer back here. And what else is special about all of this? Uh, right here, this is a step so that I can step from here to here and then reach everything on the tower. Now here are some brackets that I use to bracket the tower. Two additional points on the trailer. So I don't have a need to, uh, to guy anything. And this is all very stable. Now, as you can see from this movement here, this is what happens when I'm driving down the road. So the trailer does move. The antennas do quake quite a bit. And that is one thing that I was missing with everything on the roof. On the roof of the car, the car rides more stably. So uh, this is uh, there's more movement going on here than what would normally happen. And then this here is how I get the feed lines out to the trailer. And so I have uh, basically four feed lines leaving the back of the car. And then I just use some washers as uh, backing plates for these uh, through wall connectors. These are type N connectors. And then the feed lines basically leave the trailer and then they are strapped along the tongue here and then go directly under the car. And through the bumper. <laughs> There's, there are grommets in the floor and I was able to just punch through the floor. I don't even know how well you can see all that, but that is how it all gets into the car. And then uh, there's the, uh, the path. And this here, like I said, this is only adding four feet to the cable that I already had existing. And uh, the, uh, the rotator control cable is, is in there too. And it's not cut or anything. This is a 50 foot continuous run from the rotator to the inside of the car. So uh, there, we didn't cut that, and now I'm not going to. I still have the familiar pass-through here for my coax, so these are for the loops. And then I have these ports down here that would be for the Yagi's. And uh, right now the Yagi ones are passing out through the rear bumper. Once I put the tire back on the roof, then I will go back to using these again. For contests, I doubt that I will have the loops in play. I don't know. I'm still thinking about my, my plan there. I'll get back to you once I come up with a decision. All right, so that's it on the trailer. And like I said, it's short-lived. I only did one contest with it and it's functional, it works, and it's effective. And it's a very easy way to transport, set up, tear down. All of that is very convenient, but actually using it on the run, quick stop, quick takeoff, quick maneuvering, and all that other stuff. It's not necessarily practical for VHF contesting. If I just need to transport the tower and I don't want to put it on the roof, it's fantastic for that. It's very convenient, but it's just not really going to stay there. It's a whole lot more convenient to just put it, well, it's not really convenient to put it on the roof, but it's more uh, free flowing on the roof, smaller footprint, faster maneuverability. It really has its pros and cons, the trailer versus the roof. So let me know if you have any questions. I think I've covered everything, especially for such a short-lived project. So <laughs> as always, I appreciate you being here and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.